No, it's not Nanite for Unity, but it will help you automatically generate LODs for your models that maybe you purchased from the asset store and they didn't come with LODs. Hey, Chris here from Lom Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you improve the performance of your game without knowing how to do 3D modeling. Unity provided us this tool back in 2018 as an experimental kind of Let's see how it works. Implementation for having automatic LOD generation in editor. That's really convenient because a lot of times when you get an asset from the asset store, it'll come with one version of the model and that's it. So when you're trying to go through optimization passes, you're like, okay, hey, let me just LOD this out because my 100,000 polygon character or whatever, I don't need to show that at all times, right? So this tool is called auto LOD, which is actually name the way that it sounds makes it sound like you can just click a button and generate lod's and you can in the editor at runtime this would be significantly more challenging you basically have to re-implement a lot of what was implemented by unity to be able to work at runtime so i do want to make that distinction that this is in the editor you click a button to automatically generate however many lod levels that you want it saves those as assets and then it generates an LOD group on that component that will handle that transition from each LOD. It will not, at runtime, automatically generate new LODs for you. This needs to be done in editor first and packaged in your build. So what we're gonna do today is use this auto LOD. I'll show you how to install it, how we can use it, set up some defaults, and using Unity's sensible defaults, we will see what kind of performance we get on a scene that has around 1.9 million triangles and what kind of performance improvement we see from replacing these things with LODs. I will also say I cannot give you the full project on GitHub for this one because I'm using some assets that I got from both Infinity PBR and Reversed Assets. I'm imagining that you have a scene already and you're trying to optimize that scene. It seemed reasonable to use some live asset store models and generate this auto LOD to see how does it work with real life scenarios. Let's take a look at the scene and see what we get with just the normal stuff, no LEDs, no nothing. We'll see I'm getting about 17, 18 FPS here. Most of it's taken up by the rendering time because I have a lot of skinned meshes. It says 1000 meshes here because of this half work with his hair, his armor, all that kind of stuff is a bunch of skin meshes, his weapon that adds a lot of skin meshes, a lot of shadow casters and a lot of detail that we're rendering all the time. If we look at a worst case scenario where I can see the entire scene, we still see here around 17 FPS, 4.8 million triangles. It looks like some of the shadows started to go away. The shadow distance isn't quite that far. Probably right around here, 5.7 million triangles is worst case scenario altogether. So this model, which came from Infinity PPR, it's really high quality, a lot of customization options that we can do here. It does not have a bunch of LODs that come with it. That would just be probably pretty hard to do with the blend shapes and how you can customize the mesh. It wouldn't really be feasible for them to create a bunch of LODs for every single possible option. Let's install auto LOD, LOD out this character. So if we open up this auto LOD, which there's a link in the description card on the screen, they tell us how to install via the package manager. Really, we just need this URL. Open up the package manager, which if you don't have it, it's window package manager. What we can do is click this little plus button, add package from get URL, paste that in here and click add. It'll basically clone the repository, add it into our packages, and do some post setup scripts because this does also check out a default mesh simplifier for us. After it's done importing, it'll ask you, do you want to install the default mesh simplifier? You're definitely going to want to say yes to this one. It'll do that in the background, so wait a second until you see that it does some re-importing and some recompilation. Cool, now that's here, we'll see that we also have a Unity mesh simplifier package added, as well as auto LOD. If you go to your player preferences, which is edit preferences, you'll see that we have a default mesh simplifier of quadratic mesh simplifier. In here, we have the ability, I don't know why mine are disabled, honestly. In here, you have the ability to enable the defaults that we'll use when we're automatically generating LOD. The only thing I wanna quickly say about this, we're gonna talk about the settings whenever we actually start simplifying the models, but just know that here is where you can set up the defaults that it will automatically populate on our LOD helper script that we're gonna look at in just a second. If when you're simplifying the models, it takes too long, you can play with this slider at the top, which is supposed to throttle how frequently the editor stalls out whenever it's generating each of these models. Also, I am disabling scene LOD because we're not gonna talk about hierarchical LOD in this one. That's one I wanna cover in the future as a totally separate topic 
and the implementation used in auto LOD package is not the ideal solution. There's a better one that Unity has. Now, before we actually go into start using this, I want to talk to you about uninstalling this because it's not as straightforward as you might think. You might just think in the package manager, you say remove. That gets you most of the way there, but if you want to re-import it later, it doesn't import properly unless you open up your project settings, which again is edit project settings. You go to player in the other settings, or down to script compilation, you're gonna to wanna to remove enable Unity Mesh Simplifier. If you don't do that, whenever you re-import auto LOD, it will not bring back the Unity Mesh Simplifier, assuming you uninstall them both, and you can't make it work because it'll tell you it doesn't have Unity Mesh Simplifier because this defined symbol is already set. You can remove that just by selecting it, clicking the minus button, and then clicking apply. I'm not gonna do that because we're gonna keep going with it for now. Okay, in our scene view, let's select our half-orc male prefab. Make sure we open it up. So whatever model or whatever prefab we're wanting to generate LODs for, we wanna do this on the prefab itself, not on the individual game instance, because we want this to apply to every instance of this, right? We don't want it to only be that one guy that gets the LODs. We want it to apply to all of our prefabs. In the interest of time, I'm gonna make sure that only models that I want to get LODs generated for exist as a child of this main prefab. Now, if I click add component to the root level prefab object and type LOD, you should see this LOD generator helper. If we click on that, we'll get this LOD generator helper and it gives us some simplification options. To ensure we get the best quality result on all of these simplifications, I want to preserve border edges, preserve UV seam edges, preserve UV foldover edges, preserve surface curvature, and enable smart link. All of those just make sure we have a better quality LOD result. So the popping between different LODs will be less noticeable. I'm going to leave most of these alone because Unity tells us that they will give us sensible defaults. The only thing that I will say is if you check out the settings of each LOD level, you'll see some options. So it will try to combine meshes, which is great. That gives us fewer draw calls. We can also turn on combined sub meshes, for example. You can see that the way that they set this up is it gets progressively worse in the lighting quality. Here we'll see shadows will be completely off. So let's leave those alone just to see how they work. And I want a relatively aggressive transition here. So the screen relative transitions affect how the LOD group is generated. Quality affects approximately how many triangles we're going to try to keep on each mesh. So 0.65 means we're going to try to keep about 65% of those triangles. 0.42 means we're going to try to keep about 42% of those triangles. Other than just adjusting the screen relative transition, that's the only thing I changed. You can add additional levels if you want more than just the three levels. For now, let's leave that alone and just click Generate LOD. This will take a minute on this object because there are a bunch of meshes to simplify. Great, after these have been simplified, we can see already we have LODs. And if I move the scene camera around, we'll see on the LOD group that camera moves. For your game, you'll configure the LOD group based on whatever performance targets you want. I'm just gonna mess with the LOD group settings here a little bit, playing with when they fade in and out. You'll notice as I'm doing this, there's one piece, this club, that's just not working like the rest of it, right? It just disappears at LOD one. We'll look at that in a second. For the time being, I'm just going to make it so it's excluded from the LOD group. I think here you can see very clearly why I didn't really want to make the shadows not work anymore at LOD one or two. At least with this aggressive of a transition, it's really obvious as we transition from one to the next because the shadows just disappear. Now, because I don't really like what happened here, I'm going to click destroy LODs, which will undo all the changes, including removing all the assets. And by the way, you will see that I did improperly here. You need to make sure you open the prefab and click destroy LODs. I'll just change the last level to keep the shadows rendering and we'll see how it works out. I'll also adjust the screen relative transitions to be a little bit less aggressive and click generate LODs again. Go ahead and apply that to all prefabs. Disable the original skin mesh renders and the hair and all that kind of stuff. If we click play, we can already see significant performance improvements. I'm already getting 60 FPS. And over here in our worst case scenario, we're still seeing right about 60 FPS all the time with just those models replaced with lower quality LODs, even casting shadows still. We can see that it does not work particularly well when we have an object parented 
because it generates this new object called underscore UMS underscore LODs with each level grouped together, which sounds good in theory, but we can tell because of where it's placed that didn't work particularly well for us. We can fix that by including that as always shown or simply simplifying that one separately from the main mesh. That seems to be one of the issues. Remember, this is an experimental package, so you might have to play with it a little bit to make it work exactly perfectly for you. Unity actually gives us a little error telling us that it won't work. Let's take an example of when simplification doesn't work very well. We'll open up the fence because this is some geometry that's already pretty simplified. Each bar is basically just a cube. It's got some cubes connecting it and occasionally a relatively simplified cylinder for the post. I attach to this the LOD generator helper. And remember earlier I was saying that the preserved border edges, UV seam edges, all of these checkboxes end up giving you a higher quality result. Let's prove that by using this pretty simplified mesh and leaving all of them unchecked. Again, using the default quality settings, let's change level three to include the combined meshes and to cast shadows still and play with the screen transition so it's kind of aggressive. If I generate those LODs and we look at some of them, we can see a really bad result. These fence posts are no longer cubes, they're kind of random strands. So you can see the shape of these fences is no longer like a fence. It's just, it looks like it's, it's broken, right? Now, if we undo that, destroying the LODs recheck all the boxes and just regenerate the LODs. While I'm clicking through that, I just wanna let you know that the asset store is having the 2023 New Year sale, 50% off thousands of assets. And if you spend $300 or more, you can use a coupon code HELLO2023 to get an additional 20% off that sale price. The sale only runs through January 5th. So make sure you head over there, check it out and see which assets will help you get your game working great in 2023 we can see it no longer is broken, but also the generated models do not remove any triangles. This is already as simplified as this mesh can be. In these cases, you won't want to use an LOD group because there's no benefit at all. You'll actually hurt your performance because the LOD group's doing that distance check. So this works pretty well out of the box with all of the default settings. We can of course play with those LOD levels so it looks best for our game. And our performance improves pretty much linearly from the number of triangles that we're removing, at least on my particular computer. And there's another thing I wanna cover pretty soon called hierarchical LOD, which Unity also has a package for, which kind of chunks groups of objects and will LOD groups of them at a time instead of each individual object having its own LOD group attached. I think that one's gonna be really cool. I did wanna split that video in this video because they're a little bit different. They're still in the LOD area, but this one's about actually generating automatic lower quality LOD models. And that one's more about how to attach this into your scene. So if you do wanna see that video, go ahead and like and subscribe so you stay up to date whenever that comes out. This new video is posted every tutorial Tuesday. And if you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, get your name up here on the screen, get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. Speaking of those awesome supporters, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, and Rulin, and Paul Barry. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen and Andrew Albright. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.